starts his work, I mean, he positions himself to design an understanding about an emergence or, or uh, the last thing he should bother at the beginning is planning. I mean, because, remember God, degrees of freedom. If you start by saying, how I'm linking this to planning, you lost. You lost it. There's no way. I mean, you, you, are, you actually have positioned yourself in the, you put yourself in the position of the ultimate edit doc, doctrinaire. And you, you, you have to obey. I mean, if planning dictates the pace, the space of learning, well, <laughs> there's no chance. The last thing you have to very much put in your mind, f planning. I mean, let's talk about that in a few days, in a few hours, in a few weeks, and then we'll see. Being a, 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 an epistemologist, being a master communicator, at the end, you will see how you manage to really close the gaps between the language, the logic, the aesthetics of design, and those of planning. Moreover, uh, remember a, a huge, a big issue that you guys are not paying attention, and this is something big in our way of doing design in recent years, is the difference between impression and expression or what we say, understanding and explaining. You see, to create an appreciation, it's pretty easy. I mean, not that easy, but pretty easy. Most people will find the way, I mean, I mean if you give them time, just give them the tools, they'll actually fall in love with it pretty quickly because creating an alternative uh, framework that a describes an alternative world. Most people, at the end of the day, we are all, I mean, this, this is something that most people will, will find, fall in love and find pretty easy to do. The big challenge is the explanation. And this has become a major issue in the way we do design. And it brings me exactly to your, I mean, the point, that your question. You see, and it deals also with the tra transition from uh, design to planning. Uh -huh, because once you have created the appreciation, you have not even done 50% of the way, maybe 35 or 40. Now, um, when you have to explain what you have created, when you have to really uh, unfold your impression or propose your impressions to a guy who's supposed to go and do something with it. It's a totally different kind of game. Totally different kind of challenge. Now here you see, again, we are trapped by planning. Why? Because planning is universal. We use the same language, the same, I mean, process. It's, 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 uh, uh, and you accept that once you present the plan to a big audience, everybody will read it in the same way. That's not the case with design. Our basic assumption is that every participant, every, every individual in the audience will read it differently because it comes from a different point of view, different experience, different organization, uh, and he will be given a different mission. And this is exactly what really bothers him, their mission. <clears throat> now, if you want him to appreciate what you're offering him in the big sense, and then be able to link it to a specific mission, you have to explain to him the whole issue differently. So, for example, we are becoming more, you see these big conferences where plan, and you, when, when you end the planning and you present the plan, there's a really big audience. This is actually, in, in, I mean, in social terms of functioning, bad for design. 
when a designer is supposed to explain his impressions, his appreciation to a specific guy, he has, I mean, he must be in control. You cannot talk in universal, in universal terms. You, he must have been, he must have the impression that the whole design is focusing exclusively on him. And the explanation must be focused totally on him, which means that before you translate yourself from <clears throat> impression to expression, namely you make yourself ready, or you, which is a part of the design, to explain your design to a specific function, a specific level, I mean commander, a specific human being, you have to conceptualize him as a potential opposition. I mean, I mean, map him mentally, see his, learn his biases, learn his weaknesses, learn his, I mean, go, I mean, gain his heart and mind and make sure that he understands and, the, and, and, and develop the language, I mean, tools, develop the aesthetic tools <clears throat> that will help him appreciate what you actually aim him, uh, what you actually expect him to understand. So you see, this, you guys, I mean, are, are so much concerned with the transition from design to planning. And what has been already been done, I mean, uh, totally uh, distortion. I mean, the distortion that has been done in, in the army work. And the final, by the way, the final publication of JCS, uh, which is uh, uh, joint planning, the final publication, 2017, is a huge distortion. I mean, it's, it's, it's one big paradox get, that cannot be dealt with. I mean, you have to destroy it. Get rid of it. <coughs> Just bypass it or bypass it. You see, because it's not a, 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 a technical method to transit from design to planning. It's a matter of how you really translate an appreciation to an explanation to a guy who did not participate in the design process. How you reteach him or how you cause him to relearn or learn together with you what you actually... This is what so Socrates is always doing. In the way that he is actually dialoguing with the antagonists, he actually causes them to learn together. He is actually relearning together with them. And it makes them part of it. You have to, every specific uh, addressee that you are uh, to, to whom you are, you are addressing your, your design, uh, to whom you are trying to explain what you have done, and to whom you are at the end trying to specify exactly what he's supposed to do or where he's supposed to go and plan his piece must be done individually with full attention, full focus, and it is a part of the design. You see, it's an integral part of the design process. So, That's a great all experience. these rituals, no, I mean, irrelevant. It's always tete a tete, a man on man. I mean, uh, uh, Make it intimate, make it, make it close, make it comfortable, uh, and then make sure that you study really deeply the guy. I mean, relating to him as an enemy, as an opposition. <laughs> uh, and then make the way to his heart and mind. So, fantastic. okay? Absolutely. It reminds me of, you know, you got that Steve Jobs book in there. Um, there's this great story about him. I can't remember which vendor it was, but they believe so strongly in his ability to create a reality distortion field mm -hmm. in meetings 
that they made it a rule that they couldn't sign a contract when he was in the room. Mm -hmm. He could convey such a compelling mm -hmm. frame mm -hmm. that people would make deals that weren't in their best interest because he was able, he knew them so well, right? Mm -hmm. He was able to, uh, to frame the opposition so well. So again, it's, it's a matter of social dynamics, psychological communication, it's a bubble design.